Well, because we're completing the octave of Easter, I just want to say Happy Easter, everyone. Appreciate it. So imagine if God told us he would heal one person in our life, and we get to choose who it is. Who would you choose? So if we could choose one person to get healed of anything, who would we choose? And what would you heal them from? Let's say someone has debilitating pain lasting years, and you just want to see them uh, pain-free again, or you, you want to see someone restored to their full mental health, or you want to see someone have peace from an abusive past, or you want them to come back to Mass. Okay, so take a few seconds. To, and by the way, it could be yourself if you, want, if you want to be healed. If you get to choose one person to receive God's healing, who would it be? Okay, so once you've chosen a person, imagine if God then says, okay, now that you've chosen who will be healed, I will give them healing if you pray over them and if you talk to them about my son, Jesus. Or he says, okay, I'll give them healing. They have to go to the doctor. Or I'll bring them back to me. Just stop nagging them to come to Mass and then politely, gently invite them to Alpha. Okay, so what we're talking about today is God healing through secondary causes. So that's what we talk about in theology, secondary causes. When God heals directly, that's a primary cause. When God uses medicine and other people, etc., that is what we call secondary causes. In the first reading, there is a famous verse. It says, They even carried out the sick into the streets and lay them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. That's remarkable. People are being healed just by his shadow. And there are a few other incidents in the Acts of the Apostles where um, God heals through objects, like St. Paul's handkerchief, no joke. And so this is part of the explanation of why Catholics use holy water or relics, or candles to heal people. So God wants to heal people in our lives, but sometimes he'll only heal them through secondary causes. Why? Why not just heal them directly? Three reasons. First is to remind us that we are interdependent. You are not God, and you need other people. Number two, it makes us more humble. All of us want to be healed, but sometimes we don't want to go to a doctor or go to a counselor and reveal to them our problems because we're proud. And third, healing helps the other people grow. There are people in your life that want to help you be healed, but you stop them. But when they help heal you, they're participating in God's healing and they're growing and that's good for them. So today being Divine Mercy Sunday, the Divine Mercy weekend, I think there are certain people God will not give his mercy to unless it works through you. That is part of the plan. Three other points to keep in mind. The first point is courage. The text today says, many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles and the believers were all together in Solomon's portico, a public place. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. So healing requires courage. And there we see the apostles, they're publicly proclaiming Jesus. They're not afraid to be known as his followers. Why aren't they afraid? Because Jesus is risen, gives them courage. They know he is on their side. And so all of us, if we want to be healed, we want to see other people healed, We need more courage. We have to ask Jesus for that. Second, the greatest healing is always, as we know, we've said this a million times, the greatest healing is always spiritual healing. It says, yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord. Great numbers of both men and women. Uh, When I I was a teenager at St. Paul's in Richmond, Uh, One time we had um, a layman. We invited him to the church, and he had the gift of healing. And so he would invite people. He'd give a talk in the evening. He'd invite people 
He said, if you want me to pray over you, I'm happy to. But he said, the greatest healing happens in the lineup for confession. I always thought it was funny because the lineup, people didn't listen to him. <laughs> they still, more people lined up for him. But at one point when people were being prayed over, he just discreetly announced, he said, I just like to praise God. One person has felt healing. But he said the greatest example of healing he saw was when a young girl came up, she asked to be healed of a physical problem, and she was never healed. And that little girl um, accepted it as Jesus' will for her. And he said that's the greatest healing. And so every cross that we bear, sometimes God heals us of it, sometimes he lets us carry it for the rest of our life. And the point of it is that every cross, whether healed or not, is supposed to lead to our spiritual healing. And that's the greatest healing. Uh, we have Alpha starting in two and a half weeks, so May 11th. Uh, Alpha, we know, is the, probably the greatest way people can come to faith, that they can explore it. So as we've mentioned many times, a free dinner, 25-minute video, and then a chance to share what you think. No one would judge you, just share what you think. And so a lot of people could use that. All they need is just a gentle invitation from us. So think about Alpha in two and a half weeks. And number three, healing from spiritual oppression. The text says, a great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. So for most people, the highlight of Alpha is what we call the Holy Spirit Weekend. We go away for just one day on a weekend. And for most people, they say the best part is when they get prayed over. So we just say, does anyone want to be prayed over? And just in small groups, usually in pairs or in threes, um, we might just pray with someone or if they're comfortable, we just put our hand on their shoulder. Do you mind? They say no. They get prayed over and they experience Jesus' love. That is so powerful. Everyone, uh, demons are real. Demons affect people's lives. And the people who are supposed to help are us. We're the Christians. And so let me ask you this. Parents, would you be willing to pray over your children if that's the only way they would be healed? And then husbands and wives, would you be willing to pray over each other if that's the only way the other person could be healed? Because all of us are, will, we always pray for people, but we're hesitant of praying over them. But what happens if God's mercy will come only through the hands of someone who loves them? What if that's part of his plan? Would you be willing to do it? So, if you want to learn how to pray over someone, or you want to be prayed with, prayed over, talk to our Alpha team. They, they have a lot of experience. They could teach you. Years ago, I was at an event, um, and people were invited to come forward if they want to be prayed over. And I believe me, I don't have much experience in this, but I said, I'll help. So one guy came forward, they had a bunch of groups. One guy comes forward and I extend my hand, I put it on his shoulder and a few other people are praying with him. And he told me later, he said, you know, when I was being prayed over, I opened my eyes and I saw you praying over me. And I want to thank you because I felt some healing from some sexual abuse in the past. And I was really humbled by that because I don't think I have the gift of healing. But I was just a, just a very small part of an instrument in God's hands. And so that's what it means to cast our shadow on someone. It's simple, but it's absolutely necessary, everyone. So who do we have to help with our shadow? Who in your life do you have to help with your shadow? And other question is, Whose shadow do we have to go to for healing?